All right, so we have the oral cavity up here. We have the teeth, obviously. This section is the pharynx. Okay, down here we have the pleuroperitoneal cavity. The tongue is right here. Right, each of these gill chambers here and here and here and here, those are called parabranchial gill chambers. Okay. Um, the first one is actually associated with the spiracle and is pretty modified. The second, third, fourth, and fifth gill chambers are called holobranch gill chambers. That's on the very last page. It's on page 158 of the chapter. This last one is called a hemibranch um, gill chamber because it only has the gill filaments here on one side of the gill chamber. Right, So the gill chamber is like the space. And see this posterior part doesn't have gill filaments on it. Okay, so the last one is a hemibranch, and also the first one that's associated with the spiracle is also a hemibranch, only has gill lamellae on one side. Okay, so these are the parabranchial gill chambers with gill filaments, and then the septum between each one separating is called an interbranchial septum. Right, and we learned in the muscle part that the muscle part of that is the interbranchial muscle, and then these obviously are the gill rakers. Okay. Any questions about that? And then of course we have the internal part of the spiracle here, and then these are considered the um, internal gill slits, whereas like the space in here is a parabranchial gill chamber. Okay, um, as we open up the shark here, the most obvious thing, thanks, I'll let you do that. The most obvious thing is the liver. So we have the right lobe of the liver, the median lobe of the liver and the left lobe of the liver. We have this spalciform ligament here running down the middle of the median lobe. This flattened section here that oftentimes has kind of a green tint to it is the gallbladder. I'm not going to ask you to identify the bile duct because it's usually um, too difficult to see, but just know that the gallbladder is here. Okay, the falciform ligament has an opening here, this large opening is called the ostium tubae, and that's where the eggs go in. So the ovaries, you've got a left ovary here full of eggs. The um, egg would rupture out of the ovary, float through the body cavity, and into the ostium tubae. It would follow the oviduct around, and um, around through here we actually cut through the oviduct, and it would run behind the ovary here through the oviduct down to the oviduct here and then um, the shark fetuses would mature in the uterine horn here. Now there's a left and a right side of that. You can see the right side over here. Here's the egg. Here's the, sorry, the ovary with the eggs, the oviduct, and then the uterine horn on this side. Okay? Um, so we're going to pull over our left lobe of the liver here so that we can see into our esophagus. So before it was cut open, I would just see that from the pharynx would transition into the esophagus here, and then this part would be the J-shaped stomach, okay? So as we open that up, we have the papillae <coughs> of the esophagus here, and then once it starts to be rugae, that's the stomach, okay? So we have esophagus up here with papillae and stomach down here with rugae. Now there's three main sections of the stomach. This is the cardiac portion of the stomach, the body of the stomach, and then the part uh, coming up here is the um, uh, pyloric region of the stomach. Okay. Um, the outside curve here is called the greater curvature of the stomach. The inside curve is a lesser curvature of the stomach. This triangular green organ on the outside of the greater um, curvature of the stomach is the spleen. Okay, I wanted to mention the mesenteries as we go here. So the mesentery here between the spleen and the greater curvature of the stomach, it's really thin. We can see how it attaches there. That's the gastrosplenic ligament. Okay, gastrosplenic. Also, the stomach, if we pick that up like this, you can see there's a mesentery here and here that um, can either be called the greater omentum or the mesogaster. Meso referring to mesentery and gaster like gastric for the stomach, okay? So this is either the mesogaster or the greater omentum. 
okay um so the pi back to the stomach so the pyloric region of the stomach here terminates at the pyloric sphincter right here so this is our pyloric sphincter you can see how it really you know um, tightens down there and the pyloric sphincter can either open or close um, to keep food from going into the intestines too early or open it up if it needs to pass to the small intestines okay this is all the small intestines the shark has. This is the duodenum, it's pretty short. It doesn't have a jejunum and ileum um, like humans do, okay? So this is our duodenum. And the next part of the digestive tract is this large valvular intestine. And it's got a spiral valve inside, as you can see here, right, where the food goes around and around and around and around, all the way down. That really increases the surface area for absorption and time for digestion. And at the very end here, we have the rectum, okay? Um, one thing I wanted to mention up here that I didn't get to yet was the pancreas, okay? So below the pyloric region of the stomach here in the spleen, you can see this dorsal lobe of the pancreas here. Now this little part here, you can see is kind of the same um, texture, that's the ventral lobe of the pancreas, okay? So it wraps around um, kind of the duodenum area, the end of the pylorus, okay? And then the little part, sorry, connecting the two between the dorsal lobe and the ventral lobe of the pancreas up here and underneath is called the isthmus of the pancreas. Okay, now there's a few mesenteries in this area. So just like we had the greater mentum over here or the mesogaster attaching to the stomach, if you um, look between the liver here and the stomach here, this much smaller mesentery here that wraps up the hepatic vein and artery and goes to the stomach over here, all of this part is called the lesser omentum. It has two sections. It has um, uh, the hepato, duodenal section and that's this lower sheet here that goes to the duodenum so that's the hepatoduodenal ligament right it's part of the lesser omentum and then you have this sheet here so this one's hepatoduodenal and this one is gastrohepatic okay so don't get the order confused hey guys can you be quiet because I'm trying to make a video just not so loud okay so hepatoduodenal um, ligament here and gastrohepatic ligament here and then up here it's just the lesser omentum but both of these are parts of the lesser omentum. Okay one other mesentery that I wanted to mention um, that attaches the ovary so this mesentery here or if you peel it up this way that attaches here um, the mesentery that attaches the ovary is called the mesovarium right makes sense if this was a testes this part would be called the mesorchium Okay. Um, as you follow the oviduct down, the mesentery that suspends it and the uterus is called the mesotubarium. So think of the oviduct and the uterus as a large tube, right? So mesotubarium is this mesentery. Okay. As you pick up the spiral valve, sorry, as you pick up the valvular intestine here, you'll notice that there's also a large sheet that um, suspends the valvular intestine. That is called the um, mesentery proper. And you'll see kind of a line right here. That's where it merges into the mesogaster or greater omentum that suspends the stomach, okay? So mesentery proper here and um, greater omentum or, mes or uh, mesogaster here that attaches to the stomach, okay? Uh, the last little bit here getting down into the cloaca. So again, we have the rectum here, and the cloaca is just the whole space here, kind of a generalized um, space here between the pelvic fins. There's two parts of it in the female. There's this opening here, which is usually more ventral, um, and that is called the caprodium. That's where the rectum empties into the cloaca. And then, um, and in your book, there's a, they actually put a stick in here, so it says stick in the caprodium. But that's just like, just to show you like where it's um, opening. Sometimes it's confusing. 
right? Then we can take our probe, similar to the stick and the figures, and put it here and see that it goes up into the uterine horn. So this opening here is the urodium, okay? So urodium for the uterus and cuprodium for the um, opening of the rectum, okay? Then this papillae here, which is really quite large, or is that part of a shark? That's part of a baby shark. <laughs> this is the, uh, oh, it's hard to tell. See which one is attached. Um, okay, no, I think that is it. I think maybe this is part of the shark. It's hard to tell. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, That's it. Okay, so it just has a really large one. So keep that in mind. This one has like an extra large papillae. So in females, this is the urinary papillae because it only excretes urine. Okay. Um, in the males, this would be called a urogenital papillae because it would secrete urine but also sperm onto a groove here where the um, uh, clasper would be. Okay. One other thing I wanted to mention were the kidneys. And we'll go over that when we look at the male. Right, so we talked about urine coming out here. The kidneys are these structures here running along the backbone. There's one on this side, and there's one on the other side. Kind of yellowish and go all the way down here. Okay, so that's the kidneys. We'll go over that more in the urogenital section, but just so you know. All right.